April. I'm Alessandro. I'm here to explain the mess you just saw. Um, basically, I've been performing a piece off my new record, Avanti, which was recorded on synthesizers. And uh, when it came time to perform it live, I wanted to find a way that was a good compromise between having fun and something semi-stable. And the four track became that instrument, uh, which led me down a path of figuring out ways to make it interesting and changing over the different times that I've played the show, which is now been played probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 times, so and enough to get bored with it. At the base of it is a four track cassette recorder, or it could be any brand, but in my case I use a old Tascam. The reasons why I chose this is because they give me, it gives me access to the pitch control by hand and it's very easy to use. And it has a very good, uh, well, efficient EQ on each channel. At the base of it is the fact that I convert my logic sessions into four track cassette sessions. So there are four different tracks, each one being a different part of my composition. At different parts of the arrangement, I decide which part to bring up. Um, I decide what sort of EQ it has, what sort of uh, spatial as, uh, assignment it has, if it's left or right or center, and which effect it goes through. So this is a clean bass sound, um, as far as what well, clean, as clean as it'll get in my world. Right now it's completely clean, but I'll show you what I mean by EQ very, being very effective. Uh, the high end, particularly being cassette, once you boost the high end, you'll get a hiss that uh, will tend to get make to make everything very warm and fuzzy. The pitch wheel allows me to make slight changes. Now it's exaggerated, obviously. In my case, I have two effects that I've been using all the time since I started playing the show, which is a uh, Mr. Black uh, Eterna Gold Modified, which is a very good sounding reverb with a little bit of shimmer on it. and and the Strymon Timeline, which I had forever. And uh, I I also use a Tube Screamer. It's the new new new, new Tube Screamer. And uh, it allows me to keep track of the, how much drive I can assign to the, to the reverb. I basically have the arrangement divided in four tracks. It was originally recorded on an old synthesizer called uh, EMS Synthi, AKS. Um, recorded stereo with left and right, and two other tracks recorded uh, with a microphone of a Zoom. The way that I have assigned it here is uh, I have a main track with a sequence and melody and a main track with the bass. So this is the main track. Again, I use the pitch a lot. I'm sure you get less. I like it. And then if we add the effect to this, stereo track, which is three and four, which is technically two mono tracks, hard pen, left and right, where I have uh, ambience and effects that I printed, that I, I wanted to have printed as opposed to as a, sign, uh, as a send, because uh, they're easier to pitch bend. I can choose for this track to be a little bit in the background and look more in the low mids and fill up. Or I can have it more being a high-end-ish part. The other thing I use this track for is for uh, pitch bends. I've 
been using an OP1 by Teenage Engineering for a long time and just recently switched to the OPZ, uh, which allows me to load the same sample banks that I used in the OP1. It's uh, running through an avalanche run by um, Earthquaker. The origin of this setup is um, my work with Nine Inch Nails, where I've, uh, um, during a you know pre-production ex experimentation phase, I wanted to find a way to recreate some of the tracks that I've sampled before, or some of the sounds that I used to trigger on a normal controller via sampler in a more creative way. And s somehow um, I thought about the four track, and uh, that way I sort of developed a library of cassettes with different pieces from uh, from the Nine Inch Nails show that I, that I started using this setup on. You could also play it with the pitch control and just play intervals that way if you want. The one that started it all. This is her, and it's the same setup as came back haunted to a certain extent. In the sense that I have four different chords that been they used to be triggered by four keys, recorded in Logic, looped. Um, so Logic would just play a session of those tracks ad lib. Four outputs of the sound card would go into my task and press record, go get coffee or two or ten, and then come back and uh, see see how it got transferred. So you can already hear a cassette that now has been played several times, how it already imparts its own sort of like blanket of, of uh, instability, if you want. idea is to use the, the four track not just as a uh, playback device but as an instrument. The fact that it has so many controls that are accessible and very I would say low fi not really the best sounding that means that it imparts quite a bit of color to any sound that you run through it just like a guitar pedal will. But now we have guitar pedals and mix it together so it makes it a very creative instrument. Mm -hmm. 